friends, it's Claude's and I'm back with another video. So today, in celebration of Weekathon, I am interviewing an author for the very first time. Yay! Oh my gosh! Milestone, right? So, you know, um, this video is going up towards the end of Weekathon, but you know what? It's never too late to go pick up a book. So all information about Weekathon will be linked down below as well as the links of the other hosts of this year's Weekathon. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. So without further ado, here is my interview with the one and only Ramayana Rojas. First and foremost, hi, welcome to my YouTube channel, to Welcome to Book Balls and Claude. So Ramayana, please tell me a little about yourself. Hi, I am Ramayana Rojas. I am the author of Unwanted, which was published almost a year ago. I am currently an accountancy student, but I'm graduating in a few days. Um, I'm graduating July 22nd, and I'm actually cumulative. So yeah, very proud about that. Thank you. And where um, are you graduating from, if I may ask? I'm from Xavier University. It's an Ateneo school in Cagayan de Oro in Mindanao. So was writing something that you always wanted to do? Um, I think so, because there was this thing when I was six years old, I mean, maybe even earlier, but I, I remember this when I was six years old, my mom wouldn't want, let me watch television, unless I could tell her everything that happened, and not just tell her everything that happened, but actually write it down. So she would train me to write narratives, like what I would see, like what did Kim Possible do, what did Totally Spies do, I would like, so that I think that's when it started. And then I started writing my own stories at about the same time because I remember I was graduating from kindergarten and I would like, um, I take like, um, this is a piece of paper mm -hmm. and then I'd make a small booklet, like a small notebook out of them. I'd let my mom um, staple them together and I'd write stories about anything really, about like a bracelet that I liked or like how that bracelet came from another civilization in ancient Greece or something or so I think that my knack or my um, my passion for making stories started very early on. And then when I realized that being an author is an actual job, that was when it clicked for me. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to do this. This is, I like this. <laughs> so yeah, that's when it started. I love that so much. Like mm -hmm. props to parents who like yes, absolutely. build up our esteem, our talents from such a young age. Mm -hmm. So if you started writing because of like um what your the habits your mom um taught you, was there like any book or story or an author that pushed you into writing as well or inspired you rather? I think that would be the first two authors that I Hello. I read. Um, I grew up in the mid to late 2000s to me to say that Twilight started it all. Um, I, want, I, I read Stephanie Meyer at an age that was probably too early to read Stephanie Meyer, but then she was the first author that I found out, oh, you can actually work as someone who makes stories. This is a thing. And then Rick Riordan, because Percy Jackson yeah. is amazing um i think those two books really helped me out but the book that made me decide that okay this is something that i think i can do and i think i can do it well was ender's game it's written by mm -hmm. orson scott card um he's a not a good person apparently but the book is a really good book and when i read it it's still my favorite book when i read it I decided that I was going to be an author and I was going, going to be as good or better than him if I could, even though that seems impossible. But yeah, I think those three authors, those three authors and those those books really helped me a lot. Yeah. Okay. I so relate to you on like the Stephanie Meyer front. <laughs> yes. I, I want to be ashamed, but I'm not. That I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> I so feel you. <laughs> like <laughs> stories back then like um 
Fallen, Hush Hush, you know, like we were too young to read those, but we were too young to understand that we were too young. But they had really toxic relationships mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that they were toxic relationships and I am still single. I think, <laughs> I think, okay, let's, let's just blame Stephanie Meyer for our singleness, <laughs> okay? Um, I needed an Edward, I wanted a Jacob, they're not here. It's your fault, yeah. Stephanie, your fault. Okay. Yeah, it's also obvious, like, <laughs> Stephanie, that we now have, like, a little bit of a higher standard with men, or a lower standard, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Yes. What inspired Unwanted? Well, it started out in Wattpad, because uh, mm -hmm. I wrote, I started writing Unwanted, I think, 2013, 2014, and I finished writing my first book. I didn't publish this one. Um, it was called Foreign Legacies, and it's about like uh, a family secret society type of thing where like each generation they pick out certain kids and they're the ones who are expected to run the world someday. But it's like a hush hush thing, like nobody knows that they're related and they rule the world. But anyway, that's not that's not unwanted. Um, I saw a cover and a blurb, like a, a synopsis. That said, like, uh, I think the book was called The Wave. I, I forgot. Um, it's about uh, at the end of the world, there are only kids and they live on an island. And it's like, how do they govern this? And it started from that idea, like, how do kids govern? And then it was like, it was an unripe idea for me. Don't panic. Panic! Don't Hi panic. there. <laughs> so... That's the, that was the question, like, how do kids govern? Like, what if uh, a kid governs a country? How will that work? But it was only still in the back of my mind because it was my Hunger Games phase, my divergent phase and dystopian phase. But I knew that it wasn't that kind of atmosphere, the dystopia thing. It wasn't the, it wasn't the kind of government that I wanted to be in, to put Lizaveta in. I didn't want the underdog. I wanted the person up top. And what would they be struggling with if they were up there and if they were kids? Because like Katniss it came from a poor district um, and Divergent, it's like, it's a, it's a totally different game, but they're not the people at the top. They're just special people plucked from the bottom. I was wondering what would, like what would the person at the top feel like? So that was in the back of my mind. And then the current political climate just kind of like shifted a lot of things in there. And when I started becoming a young adult, like when I turned 18 and 19, it was like, okay, you can vote now. You have power to change the world, but at the same time, you're still a kid. So like, nobody's gonna listen to you. So it was this um, contradiction, this balance of being so powerful and powerless at the same time. This is how you feel as a young adult. And it's like, you have so many ideas, you know that you're, in a, you're, you're coming from a good place, but nobody's gonna listen to you. So that's the thing with Lizaveta because she's the empress, but she's a woman and she's a child. And in their society, you'd like to think of their society as like beyond, um, beyond that, that they're feminists, that they're not ageists and all, but there are things that I believe that society hasn't addressed ever and probably will never address in the future. There are problems that have been here forever and I think they're gonna stay. So even though that Unwanted is put in a world 300 years from now, those are still struggles that she has. And it's a different struggle because she's, she's the empress, but nobody really takes her seriously. So I think the experience of being a young adult growing in this political climate in the Philippines mixed with a lot of dystopian angst, yeah. that's the inspiration for Unwanted. Wow, no, I did not expect that. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you say that um, Unwanted has uh, some themes of feminism as well? Yes, absolutely, because I'm a feminist and I didn't do it on purpose, but... Uh, when you're an author and you write something, a part of your soul sticks to the pages. And 
a part of my feminism has stuck to the pages and not necessarily like putting in, rubbing it in your face like dude Liz, that is a pilot she's a freaking empress she can do anything I'm showing you that even though she's an empress, even though she's a pilot, even though she's the most powerful woman in the world, she still encounters discrimination. And this is something that will happen to everyone because if it can happen to her, it can happen to you because you're not her. Like I'm nothing compared to Elizabeth. Elizabeth is like top tier. She's a, she's a badass, you know? Yeah, yeah. But this still happens to her because mm -hmm. this will always happen to you if you're a woman and you're a child. Mm -hmm especially yeah. if you're both <laughs> and yeah so I just wanted to showcase that that those things still happen and I believe those things will still happen because the world sucks <laughs> and I don't think it's gonna change uh, unfortunately yeah so what made you choose Wattpad to uh, publish your story so Wattpad has the bad reputation of being uh the the graveyard of unfinished fanfics and um toxic relationships i and felt everything. that in my soul <laughs> yeah but 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 wattpad is also it's like a nursery for mm -hmm. writers because a lot of good writers came from wattpad they had to experiment there they had to start with their bad relationships bad characterizations bad plots etc etc but they grow and mm -hmm. Sometimes they die, but sometimes they grow. And fortunately, mine, mine grew. But I had to start in Wattpad because that's where the people are. I am a business student, so I know a, a little thing about marketing and stuff and like where my, where my target market is. My target market is about 15 to 18 years old, to, to 18 year old people. And they're in Wattpad, they're reading there. And people who want to read, but can't afford books, especially in the Philippines. Yeah. Books in the Philippines are very, very expensive. They go to Wattpad. And if I want my book to be read, if I want my book to like touch the lives of other people, it's got to be there. Because Wattpad is like, as I said, it's the nursery, especially for Filipino writers. Yeah. A lot of them start there. And either they're very successful or they learn. And either way, it's a win-win. So I had to start in Wattpad. Yeah. So it was the best place to be. I was one of those authors as a kid mm -hmm. who published a story in Wattpad and never finished it. So I really get what you say about it being a nursery. But you grow from it, right? Because that's you get true. Feedback. Mm -hmm. You get feedback from the people who read it. Like you understand, oh, okay, that's that's what I have to do. Or or that's what I should not do. You mm -hmm. learn. It's either yeah. you learn or you succeed. And Wattpad is a good mm -hmm. place to fly or fall it's a good place yeah. to learn yeah one of the feedback I actually received from a reader that I still take mm. with me to this day is show mm. and not tell mm. exactly, which, exactly yeah mm -hmm. which you wouldn't have learned if you didn't write if you didn't yeah. put yourself out there exactly mm -hmm. that's something that I am absolutely thankful for what what has the yeah so when you first started publishing Unwanted on Wattpad, did you expect that you would mm -hmm. actually be publishing like a physical copy of it by the end or? No. <laughs> um, uh, Unwanted has been with me for years by that time, like uh, mm -hmm. seven, five years, maybe five, mm -hmm. seven years. And I just thought to myself, if I'm not going to write this, no one will and no one will ever know the story of Lizaveta. Nobody will ever know what I have to say. And I don't really care if nobody reads it. I just care that I wrote it. Yeah. So I didn't care if it was going to get published. I didn't care if people were going to buy it or anything. I just wanted it to be out there and out of my mind because it was going to haunt me. And I wrote this at about like 2020, right when everybody, everything was locking down. And I had to be somewhere else aside from my house. And I couldn't do that. So I had to go somewhere else out of my house inside my head. And that was a good place to start to like, to like adapt. I didn't care if it was going to get published. I didn't care if anybody was going to read it. I just cared that it was written because that was my responsibility to myself. So 
Yeah. But fortunately, I earn money from it now. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's dream. A <laughs> that's a very bo- that's a big bonus. And I can mm-hmm. call myself an author, which I still does. It still doesn't seem real. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm very, I'm very proud of it actually. But it wasn't the plan. So how was the online community as um unwanted was being published? Were they supported, especially when the news broke out that you would be actually publishing it? Um it was actually a small community. I think because uh, the people who read it either they knew me or knew of me from school or from university or from from my hometown, and then it started growing in India <laughs> for some reason, and in Pakistan as well, and then in the United States, and then UAE, and everybody was reading it, and it was like, hmm, that's nice, and they. They actually really got invested in the storylines and what I had to say, and and that felt really good. That even though this is my story and this is something that lives entirely in my head, people all around the globe feel what I feel and they want to say what I have said. Like I took somebody's thoughts and I wrote it down, but they're also my thoughts because we think alike because we're in the same situation or similar situations, and that was very positive for me. It actually, um, it was supposed to come out in July last year, but then my mother had a an aneurysm. She almost died. And I just like, I told the publishers, uh, don't publish it anymore. I don't wanna, I'm not in a good place. I think my mom was gonna die. Everything was was horrible, horrible, horrible time for me. And they were, they said, okay, but we we have to get this through now because we've already printed it. It's gonna go out. So. I'm like, okay, just do whatever. I don't, I don't want to hear about it anymore. It's like, I don't care if it gets published. If my mom is dead, I don't, I don't even yeah. want to know. I don't like, that's not my priority right now. That's just something that was in my head and now is on paper. But like, this is a very big problem for me. But then my mom survived, and my mom is still surviving right now. And it came out in August. And when I posted it on TikTok, I was really new to TikTok. I think. I got my TikTok in September or August at that time when they saw the story of the book and how like it got published, it got out even when my mom was dying and the reception of that, the support, like you're such an inspiration, you finally did it and everything. It was like, wow, like I didn't expect this. Oh, shucks. (laughs) You know, it was like at a time when I couldn't really celebrate with my family because we were always in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, the online community celebrated with me and it felt unreal because I didn't know these people. They didn't know me. They just knew that this happened and this happened and now there's a book and they supported me wholeheartedly. My sales went up. I'm like, who are these people? I don't know them, but they like, it was a type of solidarity at a time where I really, really needed it. So that was really great. That was great. It was amazing. They were, they were all amazing. Yeah. yeah. There's like some people don't understand just how great the online community could be sometimes. Yes. I mean, sometimes it's horrid. Yeah. But <laughs> sometimes sometimes it can save a life. Yeah. So while while you were getting support from the online community, were you also like gaining at least emotional support from your people in real life, like either from your family yeah, or I from was, your friends? I was, uh, my, my dad, my cousins, I'm an only child, so my cousins at that time, mm-hmm. they lived with me because my dad was uh, always at the hospital, mm-hmm. and I remember I was actually watching The Great Gatsby, mm-hmm. and I was sleeping, like, I, I slept on Great Gatsby, I'm so sorry, F. Scott Fitzgerald, <laughs> but I slept on the movie because I was so tired, and then I got a call from Sanctum, and they're like, it's live, and I'm like, wait, what? It's live? What do you mean by that? Oh, it's in the store right now. It's out. <laughs> oh, and my cousin was there and I woke her up and it was like, I'm an author. You're an author. And it was, it was great. It was great. It was a horrible time, but amazing moment. Yeah. So it's like saying you have and, two families online yeah. and in real life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I can say that. Yeah, book talk. Book talk is amazing. 
I love that. <laughs> <laughs> the book community could be really support. Like they have their moments, their scary moments. They have their but moments. Like, Especially, um, um yeah. I had a, I, I have a friend. Her name's Saul. She's also on Book Talk, and she had floating shelves, like the one that uh, Hank has, Hank Green. Mm-hmm. You know the yeah. the shelves. And then somebody told her, "Those aren't shelves. If you do that to your books, you hate your books." And then it reached 1.3 million views, I think, in a day because mm-hmm. everybody was like, how dare you tell her that she can't put her books like that? And I'm like, yes, go book talk, go slay, girl. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, sometimes the book community just gives me life. Mm-hmm. So you said that Unwanted was apparently with you for such a long time. And when, mm-hmm. when I was looking through a uh, the chapter list on Wattpad. Um, Because you publish Unwanted like one chapter at a time, right? So like, did you change this uh, story a little bit as you were uploading it? Or like, did you keep it as is from its original text? I am the type of person who needs a plan. If I don't have a plan, that's probably not going to happen for me. So I had a notebook that I got when I was in 12th grade and I wrote down like this is what's going to happen chapter one this is what's going to happen chapter two and this is what's going to happen until chapter 32 and this is everything and I could change the other things but those things had to happen in those chapters because like something in chapter one connects to chapter four and chapter four connects to chapter eight Mm -hmm. it's basically so just I just I could change little things but not the major stuff so I wouldn't consider changing it every chapter because then it wouldn't have a direction. Yeah. I had one direction and that that was it, chapter 32. Actually, there's a trivia. Um, my mom gave birth to me when she was 32. And I knew that I was going to end the whole book in 32 chapters because it was like my baby. I also <laughs> gave birth at 32. I finished <laughs> it at 32. 32 chapters. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know it just happened um, it was also it just happened but was also planned so yeah like (laughs) yeah so I know how it starts and I know how it ends and I know everything in between I can change a little parts like what she wears or maybe what she uses to get to that place but if I start something I'm usually sticking to the books like this is what this is what what I'm gonna do and I do that so um, very minor changes, if ever, if any. Okay. So when Unwanted was picked up by a publisher, did you have to uh, edit it, uh, like go back and edit some parts of the text, if not major plots of the story? I had to change some names, I think. I had to change some names because they were referring to like real life people, people that I knew. And... I also had to do the typo thing. I had to clear all the typos, but I'm pretty sure some of them survived. Typos yeah. have a life of their own and they survive. They're like weeds. That's so true. Aside from that, the the storyline, the story itself, no, very little change. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I think you mentioned a bit of this earlier, but when you were publishing Unwanted, it was mostly during the pandemic. So yes. uh, would you say that being in lockdown affected your writing? Being in lockdown gave life to my writing because I am an introvert. I don't like going outside or if I do go outside, I don't like people. <laughs> that's, so, that's such a bad thing to say. I don't like people. No, I, I do like people. It's just that um, I don't like being around them so much like I can be around people for like five hours a day and then I, I run out of my social battery yes but anyway um having lockdown having no classes at that time I think there were two months of no classes nothing mm-hmm. else to think about except for like Lizaveta telling me like bro go write it down my life is freaking amazing <laughs> you should write this down <laughs> I a lockdown gave me time to think and it was um I know it was a horrible time for everyone. Everybody was suffering. But to me, if I didn't have that time, this book wouldn't exist. The yeah. series wouldn't exist. I, you'd have to wait like eight more years or something until I finally had the time. Nobody, 
nobody would know unwanted nobody would know me this mm-hmm. wouldn't be a thing I wouldn't be on book talk I probably would have already given up reading if if that didn't happen if lockdown didn't happen then there would be no book definitely I think like a lot it, it's it's a common thing with like readers like you and writer like readers and writers like you and me like we we, we really do prefer to not hang around a lot of people mm-hmm. don't we the mind is better when it's alone <laughs> exactly <laughs> so how was the process of getting unwanted published outside of Wattpad were you looking for a publisher was it like did you decide to do it or were the, did the publisher find you I decided to get published after I finished the whole book and my parents you can actually find this in the dedication of my book I don't have a copy here but um oh my parents read 15 chapters and they told me to publish it so I did <laughs> I looked I looked for publishers and I looked for printers and everything and when I found Psychom and Sanctum they it, it sort of just like clicked it was difficult when I was younger I wanted to be published when I was 12 but obviously my book wasn't that good I had a lot to learn and yeah when I got older when I knew what I was supposed to do it was very easy easier than I thought it was straightforward quite straightforward yeah that's that's really great currently ongoing on Wattpad this there is a sequel yes. on Broken right so what yes uh, what would you tell your fans to expect from the sequel um take the U and the N from Unbroken and that's what you'll be at the end <laughs> <laughs> like um the people who've read my book um it's so weird to call them fans I just or readers rather I, I call them readers I call them readers um after they read the first book and they're like that's how it ends what <laughs> <laughs> that's how it ends and I'm like yeah that's how it ends and is there a second book yeah there's a second book how will that end worse <laughs> <laughs> that it's gonna get worse I'm gonna hurt you because that's what I do that's what authors do yeah you, um, you can expect trauma. unbroken to be out maybe next emotional damage is <laughs> it's not the aim but it's a very good um it's a good byproduct um you can expect unwanted maybe next year summer maybe summertime unbroken yeah <laughs> if I get my my everything together yeah that, like- so, yeah. how, how are like how are you able to balance you know, writing and publishing a book along with your personal life when you know when what personal life <laughs> <laughs> um school perhaps and mm. um for school I found that I read faster in school if I read a novel like I read like um uh, like 100 pages of for school work and then I read 30 pages of a novel and then it refreshes my brain and I can read another 100 pages for school so it's like a it's a good balance for me I need stories to survive what is demanded of me what is necessary what I should do so um without each other they're not going to survive um for my final question you mentioned earlier that you wanted to publish unwanted when you were 12 years old what would you tell your 12 year old oh no that was Thorin legacies oh I'm sorry my 12 year old self okay yeah um you did it (laughs) you did it I don't know how you did it but you did it um I'm very proud of you 12 year old me you have better mental health than I do but I'm an author so sucks to be you you have to wait about 10 years yeah you have to wait about nine to ten years but you're gonna get there and you know to all the aspiring writers and authors out there you have to admit to yourself that sometimes what you're writing isn't as good or isn't good enough yet but there's always a yet you can always improve you're gonna get there and there's no limited number of authors in the world there's no peak of authors you can't say there will only be a hundred authors you can all get published you will all be authors 
but just just stick to it okay don't let it go don't let that dream go because it's going to happen and it can happen and it's not that hard it's just that you have to grow first the growth part is hard but publishing pretty easy you're gonna get there that's great so where would we be able to find copies of unwanted unwanted is in sanctum official on shopee great shopee yes shopee <laughs> is your best friend it's almost the 7-7 sale guys an 8-8 sale next month <laughs> <laughs> go for it <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Ramayana. Sure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay. Um, Ramayana's um, socials will be linked down below as well as a link to where you can buy Unwanted. So yeah, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Bye.